pattern, a left flam, right, left, right, right, left, has kind of become known through drum corps and a lot of different uh, people coining phrases. It's kind of been called a blush duh lately. But I have to tell you my story with hearing that lick, what I thought was the, was the first time, one of my drum heroes, Vinnie Caliuta, was playing at a club called The Flying Jib in Encino, California, 1982. And I heard him putting that fill in. And I thought, what is that sticking? And I never had the nerve. I didn't know him then. Now we're best pals. But I didn't have the nerve. I had just moved to L.A. I grew up in, da in Detroit and went to college at North Texas State in Denton, Texas. Moved to L.A. specifically to hear Vinny play Sunday, Monday, Tuesday nights at the Flying Jib in Encino. So I'm hearing that lick. I'm like, what is that? and I'm trying to figure it out. I couldn't figure it out for years, right? All of a sudden, I'm playing at uh, the NAMM show, and I see Gary Novak, who's a f fantastic drummer, played with Chick Corea, Alanis Morissette, anyway, lots of different gigs, and I hear him do it, and I say, hey, Gary, what was that lick you just did? That Vinnie Caliuta thing, right? And he says, oh, yeah, and we didn't have a name for it. There was no blush to that, but he shows it to me. And he says, now make it really kind of kind of uh, wide. Make your flames really wide instead of... Make the flames really wide. And try accenting both of those lefts. And do it here. Kind of stretch it. Stretch it out. Make, make it not sound so up and down perfect. And when you stretch it, Blush, take a blush, blush, take a blush, take a, you make the flams really wide. So then put a bass drum in the middle. Well, I, started, I, I love double pedal, so I thought, well, I could put two bass drums, two right, left in the middle. marched on and I was talking to Steve Smith and Steve Smith says yeah that lick Vinnie Caliuta and I when we were at Berkeley School of Music in the 70s we pulled that from Tony Williams everything relates right everything goes back you know Tony Williams with Miles when he was 17 and especially later on the Lifetime album and Believe It those albums Ego you'd hear him doing the ride Fast bebop. So that's the origin of that. And then, of course, drum lines, drum cores in, in America, they latch on to terms, you know, the, the herta, the blushta, the blushta, the blashta. They started calling it blushtas. And I remember doing a clinic in Russia once, in Moscow, and I said, you know, I have been calling these, and a lot of people have been calling them blush does, but I think with the Russian accent, it's gonna work better if I sing something and you say it back. So I said, one, two, three, blush to blush to blush to blush to blah. Let's hear the audience, it was perfect. Blush to blush to blush to blush to blah. And then they got everyone. Blush to 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 It was like Nostrovia, yeah, you know, spicy bow. It worked. It was like the Russian. It was there. It's kind of that if you can say it, you can play it. I remember going to an Ed Shaughnessy clinic years ago. I think it was 1978. And he said, if you can say it, you can play it. And a lot of people need to say 
drum fills, licks, ideas, grooves before they play it. Because once you can say it, it's in here. And that's what really counts is when it's in here. Up here and in there. Blush to blush to the blush to blush to the blush to blush to blush. So let me break that lick down for you. Whether you call it a blushta or it's the Tony Williams Lifetime lick or you hear, heard uh, Vinnie Colaiuta do it or Gary Novak do it, uh, wherever uh, you've heard it, let me break it down. And it's really simple. It's just a left flam. And I prefer left flams for the Tony Williams blah, 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 blah. I don't know why. I just prefer on those kind of improv things doing left flams. But this happens to be, <clears throat> the way I do it anyway, a left flam, which is the right stick hits first and it's low. And the, you know, from rudimental days, you know, right stick one inch off the snare drum, left stick at a 90 degree angle. Now prepare, okay, I'm preparing. I hit that right stick first because it's low, it should be soft, and the left one at the 90 degree angle should be loud. Well, after you do that, in rudimental drumming lessons, you are all of a sudden at the other flam if you're alternating, so the left stick's low, right stick's 90 degrees. Prepare, I'm preparing, flam. Prepare, flam. So we're just gonna deal with the left flam. So right stick's one inch off the drum head, left stick's 90 degree angle, Right after that, it's a right, right, left. And that's it. But like anything, the accents, that's how you get it to have a feel. You can't just sound like vanilla by playing the right sticking. What you do is you accent the left. You put the left over here. And the more you stretch it out, kind of slop it up, give it that just organic, like Elvin Jones didn't play. He went, and he always talked and sang like ah, while he was playing. And that is the feel, that greasy kind of blush, da blush, da blush. Instead of blah, it up, blah, it up. I try to. Uh, tell people to start with groups of five. If you took dotted eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one and two and blop. The five would be the blop. One E and a two E and a three E and a blop. Blush, da blush, da blush, da blush, da blop. So there's four blushes and a blop. One. And you might put the kick drum under it. Not enough drummers when they fill all around the world, I, by the grace of God, get the tour all over the world, and I hear drummers playing fills, and the bass drum could be really enforcing the groove, but they're leaving it out. So I'll play that same fill without the bass drum, and I'll play it with the bass drum, and I think you'll, you'll, you'll dig the one with the bass drum more. Here's without. Here's with. Keeps the audience going. You're at a big concert, Lollapalooza, wherever. The 18 inch subs, they're hitting you in the chest. And all of a sudden, when the drummer plays the fill, he stops playing the bass drum and it goes to the higher speakers. It doesn't have that emphasis. So try playing your fills, especially this blush up, with a little groove reinforcement from the bass drum. I'll do it real slow. of this. Ringo solo from um, Abbey Road, the end. So anyway, putting that bass drum under the blush tail will really help to give it that reinforcement so the band can groove with it while you're playing this stretched out, slopped up, greasy fill. And that's my little shtick on the blush tail from Abbotsville, Canada. Abbotsford, Canada. I'm messing with you. I hear Stanton Moore calls it Abbotsville. 
So it's Abbotsville to us, but it's Abbotsford to you. And uh, don't go away. <laughs>